Hey everyone, welcome back. Now continuing in our learning journey of hands-on machine learning book series. Now today we are going to start with chapter 2. And this chapter 2 part 1, we are going to look into the introduction of this chapter. And we'll see what are the things that we'll be doing in this chapter guys. So this second chapter, it's about performing an end-to-end -end machine learning project. I know we haven't started a machine learning journey and I know we haven't learned any machine learning model. But this chapter is about giving you an overview as what is about to come in the upcoming chapters because this will set the basis. This will set the tone as how we will be progressing in your learning journey or be it any machine learning task. Now, if you ask me, this is one of the very important chapter. If you, you can skip the other chapters as well and you can come back at a later time. But I really recommend you to follow along this second chapter very closely because in this chapter, you'll get an overview as, okay, so if this is a machine learning project, how exactly am I going to start? And where does that any process would start? So it's like, if you want to prepare a sandwich, first you need to understand how to prepare one variant of sandwich so that you can fill your stomach. Now, once you're hungry, you can fill your stomach with the sandwich that you know. And then you can obviously proceed ahead and learn various variations of sandwich. In the same way, you need to understand as how to work with a single machine learning project. So as you proceed along in the upcoming chapters, obviously you'll be adding more and more tools, more and more machine learning algorithms into your knowledge bucket. But the core principle, that means the core end-to-end -end pipeline or the core end-to-end -end machine learning project, the workflow would stay the same. Hence, I really request you to follow along with me, especially in this chapter. Okay, and I'll do my best to make it as simple as possible, as informal as possible. And if it's something not clear, please do let me know in the comment section. I'll do my best to help you guys. Okay, now as the heading says, end-to-end -end machine learning project. So what do we have in this end-to-end -end machine learning project? And what does a typical end-to-end -end machine learning project would consist of? A typical machine learning end-to-end -end project would consist of starting up with a setting up a goal. Obviously, I cannot proceed ahead in my life without any goal, isn't it? In the same way, we cannot proceed ahead in our machine learning project or machine learning journey unless we have a goal set in mind. So if I do not have a goal, then I'll be getting distracted with every new thing that I'll be seeing outside. So before we begin any project, we need to start with the goal as, okay, so this is the data set that I have and this is the business that I'm working with. Now, this is the this is the goal that I want to achieve from this project. And the same thing happens in the real life as well. So we will have the business POC or business POC with us and he'll, the, he'll be the one who will be setting up the goal to the IT team saying it as, okay, so I'm representing my business now. I want you to improve my recommendation engine and give me 10% revenue boost in the next three months on the basis of this new recommendation engine project that you will be working on. So setting the goal is very important when it comes to any machine learning project because we have seen in the scenarios where a business doesn't have any goal, they'll just say it as, okay, so they leave everything to the IT system and at the end of the day, business will not be satisfied with the results we IT people is going to give and we end up wasting all our efforts in the in the project where it will not be implemented. So even business doesn't like it and we as IT guys do not like it as well. Hence, for any machine learning project, we have to start with a goal. And we need to have a big picture as what we are going to do. And the next step would be getting the data. So if this is the big picture, where and all can I get the data? Now, if I take your enterprise, where are you saving your data? Is it saved in your SAP system or is it saved in your AWS S3 bucket or is it saved in your archiving somewhere? So where exactly you have the data saved and how can I get the data? So do you support me in the getting the data or do you know what are the data that is there over there which will help me? So that will be the next discussion step that we'll have with the business. And then we'll discover and visualize the data. Now this is the step where we'll be Meeting regularly with the business, we'll understand this is the analysis that we are trying to draw from the data set. Is it matching the business requirement or not? Or is it in alignment with the business requirements? So we'll have a daily call with the business to just review as how we are progressing. And obviously 
The next step would be preparing the data for machine learning algorithms as per the expectation and the assumptions of machine learning algorithms. Finally, we'll select the model and train it. And once we have done with the training, we are going to fine tune the model. Finally, we are going to present the solution. At the end, we are going to launch this model to the production system. We will monitor and maintain the system. So this is a typical end to end machine learning project flow would look like. We'll start with setting up the goal and we go till launching and monitoring and maintaining the system. So even in this upcoming learning journey, we'll be taking up the activities in the same manner. We'll start with the goal, we'll get the data, we'll discover and visualize the data and try to find the patterns that are present in the data. We'll prepare the data for machine learning algorithms. Finally, we'll select that model and we are going to train the model, fine tune the model, present the solution, and we are going to monitor the system. So the whole things will be covered as a part of our video series as well. Okay, now starting with, let's look at the big picture that, you, that we want to achieve from this chapter. So from this uh, hands-on uh, project, especially in this chapter, so we want to use a data set that's known as California census data. And this data set we'll be using it to build a model for house prices in that specific state. Now, in order to build a model for the house prices in that specific state, I have various information. I have information about population. What is the current median income of those population? What is the median houses for each block in the California state? So I have all these details and my expectation or the goal from this chapter is we want to build a model which should be able to learn from the data and predict the median house prices in any district. Okay, so that means if I give some details, uh, details about uh, salary or the income of people and population of that specific district, and if I give those two information, I'm just giving an example, my machine learning model should tell me as, okay, given this information, so this will be the house price in that specific district. Now that's the big picture that we are trying to see. Now in order to do this, what we do as a next step is, first we'll understand what exactly is the process that is followed by the business. Now this step is called as understanding the as is process. We'll meet with the business and we'll try to understand as, hey, without machine learning, how are you actually achieving this? Now we'll get the answers from the business and they'll say it as, okay, so we'll make use of uh, various experts that we have in the domain. And we also have field agents. They'll normally update the prices and they'll update our database. And we have some experts who are sitting with us. They'll use complex calculation. And using that complex calculation, they are actually giving us the prediction as, okay, this will be the house prices in a specific area. And obviously at that point, we are going to ask the challenges that are being faced, faced by that business because we want to make sure that we are removing those challenges or we are removing the disadvantage which they have in current process by using the machine learning algorithms. So we'll ask them what is the current challenges that you're facing and we'll get the answer from the business saying it as we are relying completely on the experts and let's say if the experts change that then the opinion also from individual experts would change and there is no consistency in the expert opinion that we are getting and the cost is very high and the time taken for the experts to come back with us with the updated results is very high. So we understand what are the current challenges that are present in the as is process. Now, as an IT team or as a data scientist, the next step for us is, okay, if I'm building my model in order to uh, implement this. So if I'm building this model for, uh, for solving this problem, business problem, now how can I say my model is performing better? Now, in order to say that my model is performing better, we'll have to come up with the model performance criteria. And we'll set it at the beginning of the project itself. We are going to clearly cut, tell the businesses, okay, so this is my model that I'm going to build. And this is the model performance that we are planning to achieve. In our scenario, we are dealing with the task of regression. So this task is called as regression because I want to predict the value, which is a continuous data. The reason because I am trying to predict the median house prices and house prices belongs to the continuous data. Hence, we call this task to be a regression. Now for the task of regression, 
we have two very commonly used performance criteria. They are known as root mean square error and mean square error. So these are the two uh, important. Uh, so these are the two common model performance criteria that we have. Now, apart from this, we also have uh, one more error criteria that's called as mean absolute error. So we can tell the businesses, these are the three model performance criteria that we'll be using it as a part of our project implementation. And as we go through, we'll be using one or more than one to measure the model's performance. And finally, before we go ahead and uh, implement and start working on this project, we are going to get one more information from the business as how exactly are you going to use this prediction and in what level are you expecting my machine learning model to give the data? An example can be, are you trying to do a one-to-one -one mapping? That means if you get a house price, are you giving, are you quoting the same house price to the customers or are you using the machine learning model to get a data? at a high level so that you can plan your future investments. Now by understanding all these things, we will start working on this machine learning project. So you have understood how we go about and start working on any machine learning project. We'll start by understanding what is the goal that we are trying to achieve. And from that question of goal, we'll understand what is the current as is process and what are the data that you're going to give us and what is the expectation from us and how exactly are we going to represent our model's performance and what are the key assumptions and understanding about us, how the output from our machine learning model is being used. And once we have all this information, we'll start working on our project, that is machine learning project. Now, to be able to start working from our system, so we'll have to set up a system. Now, how to set up the environment and how to do all those stuffs, I'll be sharing it to you in the next video. Now, for all the source codes that we'll be discussing over here, so all the source codes will be hosted on our websites. So this is our website, manifoldialearning.in. Now here we have a course that's called as hands-on machine learning book series. So in order to access this source code and the presentation, which I'll be sharing in the classes. So you have to just register over here, create an account with uh, Manifold AI Learning and you should be able to access the source code and the presentation that I'll be using in the classes. And for any other resources, I'll be sharing here itself and it's a free resource. You don't have to pay anything. Just register online and you'll get the access in a secure manner. Okay, so if you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section or write us an email support at the rate manifoldalearning.in. I hope you find this video useful and I'll see you again in the next tutorial. Till then, take care and subscribe to our channel if you are new to us.